Hi, this is Steve Rendell for Fair TV. Here's a few things we noticed in the media this week. You want media to take a harder line on separating truth and lies in the presidential election. And Time Magazine has a cover story this week promising to do just that. But it doesn't deliver. Time tells readers repeatedly that the reason politicians don't tell the truth is, well, us. Voters just show less and less interest in punishing those who deceive. Of course, the people whose job it is to pressure politicians to back up their claims and say clearly when they don't are called journalists. It's their failure to challenge deceptions that lets politicians get away with them. Time is wary of the partisanship of today's media, but then goes on to recommend that people who want fact-checking of Obama should go to the Drudge Report and Fox News Channel. That's right, an hour with Sean Hannity will help you sort out the truth. The oddest part, though, is when Time tries to explain which campaign is doing more lying. Quote, compared with the Obama campaigns, the Romney operations misstatements are frequently more brazen, close quote. That's straightforward, no attempt to construct some false balance, both sides do it narrative. Oh wait, keep reading. Quote, but sometimes the most effective lie is the one that is closest to the truth, and Obama's team has often outdone Romney's in the dark art of subtle distortion. So Romney lies more, but Obama lies better. Glad that's settled. It might be hard to imagine, but there is another presidential election going on in the world. Left-wing Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez is running for re-election. He's never been a favorite of U.S. corporate media. MSNBC's Chris Matthews declared on October 1st that he was rooting against Chavez, in case you were wondering. Not all coverage is that overt, but it's not altogether cryptic either. Take an October 1st Washington Post piece in which reporter Juan Ferraro wrote that Chavez has, quote, adeptly cultivated the young. He created a ministry for youth, appointed young people to important positions in the sprawling public sector, and hugs his daughters in public, close quote. Hugs his own kids in public. Well, that's a shrewd way to court the youth vote. And we all know there's nothing the kids like more than a sprawling public sector. A few graphs later, Ferrero allows, quote, to be sure the president draws support from a multitude of young people in poor districts who believe that his policies of nationalizing private industry and spending Venezuela's oil income on social programs give them possibilities they would otherwise not have had, close quote. So maybe poor Venezuelans support Chavez because they've benefited from his policies. And maybe that matters more to voters than his daughter hugging. And finally, we noticed the language of this ABC World News report from David Muir. Quote, overseas now to Afghanistan and a stark reminder tonight of the human cost of war, close quote. When you hear corporate media talking about the human cost of war, you can bet they're about to talk about American soldiers. And that's what this report was about, the 2,000 U.S. troop deaths in Afghanistan. Of course, humans die nearly every day in that war, but media rarely take note of the humanity of certain victims. We don't need to search very far to find a counterexample. On the very same show, two weeks earlier, viewers were told about a NATO airstrike that killed eight Afghan women who had been out collecting firewood. How did ABC report about these deaths? In all of one sentence stuffed at the end of a report about U.S. troop deaths. Viewers were told that it was an incident that is causing tension. Last year, in a very similar incident, a NATO airstrike killed nine boys. ABC's brief report was not about their humanity. It was about Afghan President Hamid Karzai's harsh words for the U.S. Imagine a media that treated human life equally. Imagine it because we sure don't have anything close to it. I'm Steve Rendell for Fair TV.